today I'm going to talk about different mask styles that you can make um, in various patterns. I'm going to walk you through um, by skill level. So that should be helpful to those of you who maybe are a more of a beginning um, sewer or more advanced. And then I'm going to share some different fabrics that we've made masks out of, some fun, unique prints and designer fabrics. I'm also going to talk to you a bit, little bit about elastic techniques or the types of elastic. And then I'm going to tell you about techniques that we've found that might help you have a little more success in your, in your sewing experience. So to start out, uh, introduce myself. I'm Amy from Indigo Junction, and I also, uh, I am a marketing strategist for Prim Consumer USA, the company that recently acquired Indigo Junction. So Prim has a wonderful blog that's called makesomethingdrits.com, and there will be um, a PDF posted in a the most recent blog post, and I'm gonna show you a little bit about what it looks like. So this PDF um, could be incredibly helpful as you um, go through making a choice as to how you're going to sew your masks. Um, there is also information and links to all the most recent information from the CDC, the guidelines, um, safety, details like that that can help you. Please, please keep in mind that these masks are non-surgical protective masks that you are making for your family and friends to wear out in public to assist with social distancing. And social distancing is the key component. So we don't wanna to forget to do that. This just gives us a little extra coverage um, and a little protection, but please read um, all the information you can to be sure you're following those guidelines. And um, I know recently, I think they mentioned, be careful of uh, younger children wearing these too. Um, look at um, two and under are not to be wearing these masks. Um, this is my husband, Bob, that just told me that, and he's helping out today. Bob, do you wanna say hello? From behind the camera, I can say hi to Jennifer, Deanna, Betty, Kathy. Way to go, Bob. Rhiannon. Rhiannon. Donna. Uh, Super. A few other folks are coming on. So if you if you do show up to see my lovely wife, Amy, uh, talk to us today, go ahead and, and hit a like, hit, a, hit something, say hello. Right. Whatever. We want to know you're here, and we want to have fun with this, So and we um, are looking forward to to more of these. So thank you so much for joining us for our initial live event. Liz from Pennsylvania. Okay, Bye. super Liz. <laughs> Excellent. So again, quick note, please, uh, we'll put a link to this PDF, um, the blog post that it's embedded in after the event. And we'll probably, if you have questions and post questions in the comments, we'll most likely answer those um, after the event, not during the live cast. Um, just because, again, we're we're getting rolling with this and learning as we go. Um, as far as fabric choices, we're going to talk about um, the type of fabric. We have learned that uh, definitely a high thread count, cot woven 100% cotton, is important to use because those fibers are tightly woven and that helps protect. Um, air coming through. We have looked into other types of fabrics that you could use, say recycle, you could use men's shirting would be one option. Pillowcases are another. Remember to wash your fabric. They're asking you to wash it uh, three times before you make these masks. And um, so keep that in mind as you're progressing. So what the different styles that I'm going to talk about today for the super easy, of course, you can use a scarf and hair ties, um, elastic hair ties. That's on the PDF. I'm not going to go into that since the information's included there so that we had out there. So, in fact, I think this is the one that I was wearing, and it is um, a fun uh, indigo fabric from Moda. 
And this style is pleated with the elastic that goes around your ears, okay? So that's one style we're gonna talk about today. Another style, and this is level three or the more advanced style to make, would be the style that um, uses a actual pattern piece. And you can see this is a pattern piece shape that is then made into the mask with the elastic again. Hey, I might add, you know, the sports oh. franchise, you know, since we don't have sports, yes. you can get your husband to wear it. Yeah, go, you go might go try. The local sports team. Right. We all love our home team favorites. So think about we're Royals fans. So this is a fun one. And then, oh, Bob wants me to show the Chiefs. Okay, we don't want to. Unfortunately, I think we ran out of Chiefs fabric, so we have a half and a half here. Um, and I'll show you this style here in a second. Uh, actually, I'll show you the style now. Perfect timing. Thanks, Bob. Um, this style is, again, a pattern piece, but it has elastic um, that is strung through a casing that goes behind the head. And I did want to bring out this really cool... This might be my favorite fabric that we've used in a face mask. You can see the faces on there. Aren't those fun? And um, in fact, my mom made this one and it's her favorite. So thanks, Donna. And here you can see again how it would fit on the head in the, um, and go through the casing, the casing there. Okay. All right. So those are the, some different styles of patterns. And I will tell you there is actually a pattern with the... Um, Dritz PDF. I, this was, PDF was just created um, recently. So this style that is this pattern is very similar um, to what you see here, but it has a lot, the elastic goes around the ear. Um, so the one, let me quick tell you who's this is. This one, um, I believe is craftpassion.com that I have here that is the one that we made. So again, I think those links are in that blog post, so you shouldn't have a problem finding these details. All right, so as far as the different styles, when you're um, choosing fabrics for your mask, I just thought I'd show you some fun things to think about while you're choosing fabrics. I don't know if any of you love uh, Kaif's fabric, but this is a beautiful uh, print. And don't you love the colors in this? So again, you can have some fun picking out fabrics. Here we have um, everybody needs, right? Superhero mask. There we go. This is Spider-Man. And again, this is the behind the ear style. So for kids, why not try some superhero masks? I also love little prints on the masks. This is a, um, oops, turn it this way, the right way. This is a print from um, Janine at Uppercase Fabrics and Wyndham um, makes this or prints this fabric line. And let's talk about lining. You can line your mask with um, the same print, you know, two layers of cotton. Or you could go use flannel, um, find a piece of flannel maybe, find a, again, this is a great use for an old pillowcase that's, you know, been washed and washed and washed and is super soft. So think about that. Uh, I also love uh, actually a local artist in, um, that's up in St. Joe. Her name's Tula Pink. And she does just fun, funky fabric. And this is a line she had a few years ago and those are little cat eyes on it so there's some fun fabrics we'll get into some fun fabrics as I walk through the different styles and some of the techniques so um, when it comes to a few techniques related to different styles I'm gonna start back with the pleated style that I mentioned first and um, that is essentially there's been some variations in sizes that you cut, but nine by nine. Um, I was watching Quilters HQ, which is a local um, quilt shop in Kansas City. They've been do doing some wonderful uh, YouTube lives and Facebook lives about masks, making masks. And um, I think their 
they were suggesting a nine by nine. But essentially, you're going to be, um, you know, sewing the squares together, right sides together, and then turning them right sides out. We're going to be pleating the fabric that gives you the ability for it to open over the face. And so I thought I'd show you some ways that you can um, create those pleats in an efficient fashion. Hey, Bob well, has a question. We got one comment from Nancy here. She says, can I use upholstery fabric that has scotch guard on it? I would say, as somebody who's been wearing the mask at the grocery stores and out, if I go out, that it's kind of hard to breathe, I think. It might be hard to breathe through an upholstery fabric. Plus, if it had scotch guard on it, I'd be concerned about that. Yes. Uh, as well. So I would probably stray away from the upholstery fabric with scotch guard. I would agree. I think you want to go with something. The most important thing is comfort. So um, definitely the softer, the better, and the less rigid um, would be my opinion. Now, speaking of that, where can you go? You Maybe your stores are closed. Um, guess what? Ha go to your closet and see what fabric you have there. This was actually... Um, <laughs> It's not one of Bob's shirts, but it was a man's dress shirt that we, my mom worked on this one. This, I'll show you the finished version. So here's the finished version with, and keep in mind the stripe actually helps you when you pleat um, and put the pleats in the mask. This version can be tied, but this was a great chick trick from Cheryl at Paradiso, Paradiso, so designs using a hair tie tying your ties to a hair tie if you're short on fabric this is a great option or if you're um just like the idea of something stretchy and comfortable and not having you know to tie accidentally tie your hair up in your mask so again this was pre-made bias okay and what i'm gonna show you in a little bit is how to a little tool to make your own bias but first I want to show you how to do the pleating um, one neat trick that um, you can do is to and we don't have a down camera right now to be able to show this very easily um, so I'm gonna work you know stick with me here we were actually um, you know putting the using the ruler to be able to mark and um, mark our fabric. So I'm gonna put it inside and this will give you a better, better picture. So you line it up, OmniGrid, of course, Bob wanted to make me to make sure I showed you the brand. So OmniGrid also owns, um, is one of the family of brands with Prim Consumers. So we work very closely and love to share their products. So you're gonna line up your fabric and then you're going to um, you know, on your two inch and then l fold it up to the one inch like this and then pull your ruler out and you're able to press it. And then you'll move down to the next pleat and do the same thing. So it's a pretty nifty little tool to use while you're measuring. Um, you could also make a little um, guide for yourself just on a, a note card where you mark, you know, the different lines, mark them on the fabric, and then match them and make your pleats um, that way. So next on that particular style, you will be adding, um, there's an option to add bias. And the bias, we're calling it bias tape, but really it doesn't have to be cut on the bias. So you can literally strip your, from salvage to salvage of your fabric, you'll get about 45 inches and you can literally strip that and then make either fold your bias. Um, and there's lots of tutorials out there teaching you and showing you how to do this. Or I wanted to show you a tool that Dritz makes and this is um, a bias tape guide. So essentially you're putting the fabric into, and this is a one inch, um, I believe. Let's see. Um, yes, I believe it is. And um, then you're put, cutting your strip. Um, I think for the one inch, you cut it an inch and three quarters. And then you slide it in. You use a little pin to pull it through. This little um, tab is what you're going to pull. And many of you probably in our pattern sewing group know what 
this wonderful tool is and you'll be pressing as you go so um in fact bob earlier pressed up this little sample for us so you could see and then you'll end up folding that over the edge of your mask so those are a couple tips for the pleated style face mask when it comes to um the we'll call it the shape face mask um the cut and shape fabric mask um that one we have you're going to be sewing a seam down the front um and i'll grab this darling kitty version that mary made me um i think this is a kaufman fabric from a few years ago but it's little kitties is that not darling i told you we'd have some fun fabric um, so we're talking about this seam right here, the seam that, you know, goes right over your nose. So when you are sewing that, um, Mary came up with a really cool trick for sewing that seam. And I'm going to, hopefully I'll get this right. Um, so from the bottom up, you're going to place your fabrics right side up, wrong side up, right side up, and wrong side up. And what... That'll, ha that'll happen, so there you can see. Let's see, right side up, wrong side up, right side up, wrong side up, okay? And then you're gonna sew your seam, you're gonna clip your curves, and then watch this. This is pretty nifty. So then you open it up, and what? And of course you're gonna wanna press here but what you end up with is it's already together perfectly in a match. So then your next step on this, this particular version would be um, sewing. Where did that one go? Bob, do you see the, I don't see the cute Hawaiian one, but you get the idea here. And then we would add the bias around this version. Um, so. Just an FYI, another helpful tip. And while we're looking at those, I'll um, show you, Bob, did you have a question for me? Quick question. Sure. Just wanna let everybody know. Yes. That if you can't stay or you're, you wanna know, we're, we're gonna post the video afterwards so you, you can watch it again. Right, excellent. We will post it afterwards. And we'll hopefully do some more of these um, because we're not gonna go, we can't go super in depth on a, several things that the more I worked on this and prepared for it, the more I thought, wow, there's much, there's a lot more information we can share and we're excited to do it. So stay tuned. We'll continue to feed you content that should be helpful. Um, look at this one. I mean, for Easter, how cute is this? This was Mary's, Mary went back in her stash, she told me. This fabric was about over 10 years old and little bunny line. Yes, Bob? Uh, it looks like- uh, Louis Everybody Louis likes Louis it. Luann wants to see the, the right side out again that you just did. The technique? Yeah. Okay. Can you show that, just slow down and, and give us another look? Well, I'm glad you want to see it. I thought it was pretty nifty myself. So, so here we go. Okay, I'm gonna turn it back out for you. All right, here we go. All right, I gotta read my cheat sheet while I'm doing it. Okay, first layer, first fabric, right side up. Second lining piece, wrong side up. Then we have the exterior, right side up, wrong side up. We're gonna sew, and then when you open it, you have the magic trick and it's ready. Cool? All right. Thanks again, Mary. All right, so in fact, Mary made a couple other ones I wanted to show you. Um, this is a really fun, um, couple fun prints. Um, let me make sure I'm getting them the right, yes, direction. And here it is, here's the one I was looking for earlier. Um, with the parrots makes me want to head to Hawaii but no luck with that uh and then this it actually looks like a batik but it's not 
But thinking about batiks are very, very, very tightly woven. Um, so batiks could be wonderful fabrics to make up your face mask, face mask in. Face masks in. So keep that in mind. All right, let's switch gears and talk about elastic for a minute because that has been a huge discussion out there. Where do you get elastic? What styles? Where is it available? Um, so we have different types of elastic and um, Bob is putting, has just put on the Royals mask over here too. He does not really like um, as much behind the ear, but you, again, um, you know, hopefully you're wearing these maybe out in public and at some points a little shorter amounts of time. If you're wearing them for a long, long time, you might want to consider the elastic that goes around the head for more comfort. So here are the different types of elastic that I'm going to show you. Um, this is, you'll find elastic like in packages like this. This is a Dritch package that is a bulk. I think there's eight yards in here. Then you have little containers like this. Of course, you can buy it by the yard on spools. Um, this is the braided quarter inch. You can see that. And then there's also cord elastic, and um, which is can be pretty comfortable because it's so thin. And different elastics have different elasticity. So depending on your elastics makeup, it could be either too tight or too loose, potentially when you're reading, you know, the instructions on cutting your elastic. So my advice would be, before you cut it, try it on who's the mask on, who's going to wear it, and make sure you're comfortable with the length of elastic that you're putting into the mask. Um, so these, and if that's you, what I found, because it's too tight, you got you got to kind of measure. So you get you got to yeah. you got to find find that. Perfect, Perfect fit. fit. Um, this elastic, I did check with uh, my people at Prim, and they are working. Their place you should be able to find this elastic is, um, you know, you can go to your local, check with your local shops, see what they have, your local quilt or fabric store. Also, Joanne Fabrics is weekly getting new stocks of elastic so check back if they're out you might want to visit again oh and bob oh gosh i was showing you the upc code yeah there it is there's one of your options so what if you can't find it what are else could you use well remember we talked about um recycling and so this again is another fun um mask that's made with a man's shirt with a little stripe, pretty smart looking. And again, here we did the hair tie as an option for elastic. Where else can you find elastic? Well, I recently there's been a lot of discussion about using t-shirts. So here we have a t-shirt, right? And I had recently um, used some, they call it almost t-shirt knit yarn that you can make with the, the shirt. So with the shirt, you can either cut off the bottom, uh, cut a strip, or you can cut the shirt and down the side seams, open it up and cut lengthwise. Different t-shirts have different types of um, knit and elastic. So you kind of have to experiment with the t-shirt you have and see what happens. So what you do is you, you cut off your strip, right? And then, this is the fun part. You can stretch it and it becomes its own little elastic piece for you. So this one was taken off the bottom of this shirt. This one, actually I took a length off of a shirt of my daughter's and um, stripped it from top to bottom just to see would it, when it was a vertical cut, would it do the same thing and it did. And I have recently, I don't know if any of you follow Fancy Tiger, but they just posted um, an example where they put the, let's have it match here. Where's my mask I'm looking for? Oh, here it is. So they actually used the strip of um, knit and used it as the tie. So they wrapped it around here and stitched a zigzag 
And then they use these as the ties for the mask. So I thought that was a pretty cool option if you run out of elastic or or namely or possibly your fabric if you don't want to use your yardage for your ties this would be a way to preserve your favorite fabrics um so that is the t-shirt option now one last option that um i'm going to show you is uh, I think somebody in the Facebook group actually posted this idea. And I will tell you, if you, some of you are new to this Facebook group, this is a wonderful community of people sharing what they sew, how they, what they learn. Maybe they f figured out a technique that was amazing that they wanted to share with others. They had a question and people help each other. We also, within this sewing pattern group if you just joined we have a wonderful free pattern as a member that you have access to it's a raglan um shirt that can be well it's actually a, a dress um perfect for right now a really comfortable dress for the summer but we've actually cut it down to a shirt style too so be sure you look at the free pattern and that'll be in the file section of the facebook group and hopefully in the next you know, a few months, we're going to be sharing more ideas for that pattern. If some of you wanted to get into more apparel sewing, because we have a wonderful line at indigojunction.com of garment and craft and quilt and accessory designs for you to, to look at. We have PDF downloads so you can immediately get your pattern and if you're not out of your house these days shopping in stores it's it's super convenient so we hope you'll enjoy that when it comes to um, let me show you the last place that I think is kind of fun to find um, your elastic so what you'll need is a seam ripper this is a wonderful dritz seam ripper and you will want to find possibly a bed sheet that maybe is was heading to the thrift shop. And here you can see where this elastic casing is almost the exact size of the quarter inch elastic. So you could use your handy dandy seam ripper and just rip right out the elastic that you're then going to use for your mask. See if I can do this without like, um, you know, hurting myself with the seat. There it is. Woohoo. So, you know, think of the yardage maybe that you'd find in a king size fitted sheet. It could be pretty substantial. So this was an old sheet, I think, from my son's uh, college point, college freshman dorm room. And, his, my, and my daughter didn't, she didn't have any interest in that being hers. Um, so, oops, there's the phone ringing. I want to take a quick minute too and talk about some other tools, just so you know, things that we use that were helpful. I showed you the OmniGrid ruler. Um, we also used, um, a rotary cutter is wonderful for cutting fabric. Um, we also love the, you know, the glass head pins. So if you're pressing your pleats, you can not worry about anything melting or having any issues with that. On this um, PDF, though, Vicki uh, created this for us at Dritz, and she did a fabulous job listing out um, elastic alternatives, like I talked about, as well as helpful tools. So this is another place for you to look for um, tools that might help you through the process. All right, well, I think we've covered a lot today. I would love it if you have other things you'd like covered or maybe you would like us to, um, you know, touch on another topic or go deeper into something we talked about today. And you could post those in the comments and then we can take a look at those and potentially feed you more content. Thanks so much for watching. Bob, Bob's telling me to say something. What do I need to say, Bob? Stay safe. Stay safe. Follow the guidelines. Follow the guidelines. Thank you. We can do this together. We can do this together. And I think 
this is a silver lining of this difficult time that we're we're coming together and we're helping others and I love it that people have gotten their sewing machines out and they're sewing and doing it for others in this fabulous um, in a community of that we are a part of. And thank you all for being members of the group. I want to tell you we're going to do some giveaway events coming up and we're really going to try to give you more content during this time that you're at home and you have time to devote to your hopefully maybe your favorite hobby sewing so thanks again for watching and uh, goodbye for now